When you get towed into a wave, whether it's small or big, it's like skiing downhill, powder, fast, smooth, but you're trying to keep control the whole time. You're trying to manage your pitch control, your turning, and, and, and your, 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 all your senses come alive. My name is David Silverstein and I've been a water sports enthusiast ever since I was 12 years old when I learned to windsurf in France. I'm 55, soon to be 56. Uh, I'm originally from the New York area. I was living on Long Island for the last uh, 20 years up until a year and a half ago and we uh, resettled down here in Florida to be on the water and I'm working remotely. I had put off kite falling for some time and a friend of mine enc encouraged me finally to take it up and as I took it up I, s I quickly realized that there were all these other mediums for foiling out there and uh, the first one I actually explored was surf foiling and uh, uh, it, was a, it was a battle, one of the hardest things I learned to do, uh, but it was slowly making progress and I saw the potential in it and I had seen wing foiling but I, w I had not seen it at a high level and then I spent a week in Oahu actually with Kiahi and I saw Kiahi and Muna and Rio Stevens and Muna's dad out and it blew my mind. So when you see something at a high level, then it's encouraging. Same thing happened to me with kite surfing many years ago. Until I saw it in the gorge, I didn't really understand the appeal. And, and so when you watch these videos, hopefully this gives you a sense for what's achievable. Before my trip to Shikama, I, I really did a lot of research in terms of what type of gear is suitable for me and what type of gear is suitable for the location. The very first time I went to Chicama, I actually reached out to both Nick from Lyft and also to Laird Hamilton, and they recommended that I bring the 150 with me. For this follow-up trip that I did, uh, I was talking with Damien, uh, as well as Matt Elsasser, and they encouraged me to consider the Lyft 100, which I did, and that was a game changer for me. Uh, matched up with my skills, but also matched up with, uh, um, with what the wave really can offer. Uh, accessibility to Chicama, the longest wave in the world, is actually amazing. Uh, you could leave New York or Miami on a midnight flight and you could be at the hotel by noon the next day. It's a simple flight to Lima, seven and a half hours from New York, five and a half from Miami, and then it's a, a short layover before a one hour flight to Trujillo, and all, the hotel which I stay at all the time is the Chicama Boutique Hotel and they can arrange all your transportation for you. I, I view this location as uh, one for people who are enthusiastic about being in the water, whether you want to surf, foil, or wing foil. In terms of uh, family members or friends that are with you, if they're not participating in that, there is a limited amount to do. I would think of this as being almost like in a lodge out in the mountains. You really, it's a wonderful hotel. You stay there, you have great food you're resting during the day, there's really no need to go elsewhere. There are some archaeological uh, um, uh, sites to see within a short distance of the hotel, but for the most part this is going to be for the enthusiasts who want to be, enjoy the water. I have had friends go on this trip with no skills or experience as a surfer. They might have had some foiling experience with kite foiling and wing foiling, but no surfing experience. And when at the end of the trip, what everyone unequivocally says is that this trip is about toe foiling. While wing foiling is amazing, it's all about the toe foiling. And some people are going back and they might not even bring a wing, but the winging is, so, is also very special and there's certain elements to winging on the wave that make it so unique. Depending upon the conditions, uh, generally you paddle out to the boat, 
you walk down a hill, you paddle out to the boat, and you climb into the boat like a Navy SEAL, and you're driven out to, uh, to the break that's best for that day, and the, and the drivers know exactly where to be, they know exactly what break to be at. However, in the afternoon, if you do want a wing foil, there are a lot of safety considerations. Number one, if it's big, you have to use a boat for boat support regardless, but you need the boat to come in and help you take the wing foil gear out, you pump up the wings on the boat, and then you can ride from the, from the boat. And, the, and you, leave, you keep the boats out there because you're dealing with an offshore breeze, something a lot of people would not consider doing, but it's actually extremely safe when you have the boats. If it's a small day, you could paddle out, get over the white water, not too hard. The, the, the biggest fear that I had was keeping my body healthy and keeping injuries away from me so I could enjoy the trip. So leading up to the trip, not pushing myself too hard, doing my regular yoga. I have a Bikram yoga practice that I do multiple days a week. Uh, and then getting there, not to overdo it. It's so exciting. I'm, I used to go on these surf trips and be in the water for seven hours a day to only come out for food, water, and suntan lotion. On this trip, a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours in the afternoon, nap, massage during the middle of the day. That's all the body can handle. And, and a lot of ibuprofen. Full quiver, I had a 38 liter uh, prone board. I had a 60 liter wing board, which is my daily driver, anything like 14 miles an hour and up. I brought a lift 170 high aspect. I brought uh, the 150 uh, V2 surf wing and also the 100 uh, V2 surf wing. Uh, in terms of wings, I only brought a five meter on this trip and that was all that's needed. The drone flying is done by Giancarlo. You can follow him on Instagram at, at Chicama Surfing. Every time I've been there, his drone flying gets better and better. His cinematography is incredible. Uh, in terms of the, the boat drivers, the hotels usually arrange the boat drivers. Uh, the hotel has some amazing, amazing boat drivers. Uh, uh, Del Mar is uh, probably one of the greatest foilers who never owned a, uh, his own foil until a year ago. Uh, and he's an excellent driver. They've got uh, Steve or Esteban, and they've got Jonathan, but it's, uh, all this, the hotel provides all the services you need. So David, I want to ask you, like, what is the motivation that it took you to say, I'm going to go ride Chicama, Peru, one of the longest waves in the world. Like what took you, like what, like a lot of people look at like, oh, I'd love to go to Bali. I'd love to go to Hawaii, but they don't like dive into it. Like wh what just makes you go, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Sure. There was a chain of events that led me to my first trip in March of 2022. The first one was I saw, I had started foiling and I saw, I saw videos that Laird Hamilton had dropped at both Chicama and Pacasmayo. And that blew my mind. And I had always wanted to go back to Peru. I had, got, I had done some business there and done some family trips, but I always wanted to go back with a crew of guys and do a surf and kite safari. Now that I was foiling, I was, I was, I was still interested in it. And then suddenly YouTube shows up, uh, there's a video that shows up. It's of Amit Imbar, a very famous Israeli Olympian who has been running uh, surf travel camps around the world and, and, has, and has, run, has been going to Chicama with groups for eight or nine years. And he was having a wing foil camp. And it blew my mind. It resonated with me. I called him immediately. And within 24 hours, I booked a flight. And I went down uh, within a couple of months down to, for my first trip. And I fell in love with the place. That's it. That's all it takes is just step outside your comfort zone, just like David. And then you'll be living your best life. Somebody that is like, I'm good. I can ride a wave. Maybe I'm tapping into waves and I'm just learning. Could they go to Chicama and do this? Absolutely, no absolutely. Problem. Because it, it, the decision that when you're there is how close to the pocket mm -hmm. do I want to be? And you could be all the way at the edge of the shoulder of the wave, very far from a breaking wave with much less energy. And you can get the experience of the glide and the power, understanding how to turn, start to learn your equipment, and you have more time on foil than you'll have probably anywhere in the world on a wave. I just saw his content, his footage. I've been there. That place is magic. And I wanted to share that with you guys. And David has a wonderful message because he's, you know, been a waterman for a long time. But, you know, he has a normal life and he foils for the fun of things. And to, to ride some of these waves and to, to, to be in Chicama and share this information with you guys, I think is super spectacular. So 
David, thank you so much for, for doing that for everybody out yeah. there. No, I appreciate it. And it is, uh, it is achievable. I'm just a weekend warrior. I'm not a professional athlete. <laughs> I don't know. It looks and, really amazing to and, me. <laughs> and, uh, um, and it just shows what's, you know, if you put the time into it, uh, what's achievable. But it's also, this is the new frontier of, of, of water sports. It's a phenomenal way to experience the, uh, nature. Thank you so much. And to everybody out there, have the best day ever. Aloha and share the stoke. Share the stoke.